you know, at the end of the day, I don't think either one of us cares if it's our idea. I don't care if it's mine, if it's his. If it's his, he's got a better idea. Let's do it. But whatever gets me home earlier, is that's the one we want to do. It's the Deadline Junkie Screenwriting Podcast with your hosts, Jordan Emiola, Kirsten Porter, and Rand Shammy. We see the fights as being a part of the story. You know, they're never fighting just to fight or because... Uh, we haven't had a fight in a while. I guess they should fight. It's always, always motivated by story and character. Um, fighting is the way that these people deal with their problems. So, you know, if somebody's going through a hard time uh, or someone's clashing with another character in some way, then it would make sense for them to get into a fight. But it's not something that we do just because it's always motivated by story. What is some of your advice for writing a great fight scene? Um, I think, yeah, focusing on the characters and their emotions going into the fight scene, because, you know, it's not the writer's job to come up with like super awesome choreography, because you're going to have uh, fight choreographers on set and stunt people on set who know a lot more than most writers do. And so, you know, you can always leave that part to the professionals. Uh, the writing part, you want to make sure that everything is motivated um, by the characters and what they're going through at the time. If someone is losing a fight, there needs to be a reason why. Are they, you know, in an emotional bad space or did, are, do they have something going on? If someone's winning, there should be a reason why. You know, I think just making sure that everything is motivated um, is, is probably the most important thing to do. I have a question for you. Do you yeah. have a writing routine or habit? And also you mentioned a writing partner. Uh, do you work together all the time sometimes? And what's that workflow? Well, like? this, is a, this is the amazing miracle of my life because I worked alone for 25, 28 years. And after a while you get to where, you know, you, you start to get a little tired and you think, have I written my last word, you know? And then it, it finally, I finally got smart and I realized that my best friend, Mary Gallagher, uh, who's an amazing stand-up comic, well, why don't I just write with Mary? We're together all the time. So we write together now. We've been writing together for two years now and we're working on a couple of projects and we have a couple of things that are working that we're really proud of. And she's just incredible. And she inspires me so much. She is, you can, when she, about three years ago, she'd been a stand-up for years. And three years ago, she said to me, in six months, I'm going to be on Colbert. And I was like, oh, good luck with that. You know. <laughs> uh, well, six months later, she was on Colbert. And you can Google it, Mary Gallagher Colbert. She was terrific. Uh, and, you know, so she inspires me every day. And when most days, I would rather not write. I hate writing. But she makes me do it. And as a result, I have a great time and I love what we're writing. Thank you, Mary. Yes, absolutely. I'm, in, I'm uh, inherently yeah. lazy. I would much rather be binge watching everything. And I've heard that your writer's room has um, a lot of writers who've faced trauma and all sorts of things. So having that all in the writer's room and talking about that constantly, uh, how is that? How does that affect the writer's room? How do you feel like that's different? That's interesting. I don't know. Like, I don't know if I would characterize it as, as like everybody in the room having experienced trauma. I think there was sort of a good mix of like, um, and this sort of speaks to the tone of the show, sort of comedy writers and, and drama writers, and not that a comedy writer cannot have experienced trauma, but I think there was, there is a lightheartedness in the room. And there is, you know, in the way that the show likes to break up the heaviness with, with jokes and with singing, I think that there are like a few of the writers I can think of in particular, who would bring a lot of the jokes to the table and a lot of, you know, the levity, like that was sort of true of their personality in the room as well. So, so that was nice. I think, you know, it's, I think with any show you, you work on or any project you work on, if you're tapping into something personal, um, which a lot of times you are in whatever capacity, and that's why you're writing the project or why you got hired to write the project, you know, it can be, um, it can be exhausting <laughs> emotionally. It can be uh, something that you kind of have to work through. I mean, a more lighthearted example is the book I wrote, Cherry, which is about four girls in high school. And it's, uh, you know, that's a lot of what's in the book is fiction completely. And a lot of it is drawn, you know, from my high school experiences. And so I wouldn't, I am lucky to have had a, a, a mostly very positive high school experience, but even just the, the act of writing something down and like sort of giving it to another medium 
and taking your story and making it accessible to other people, you know, you kind of have to just embrace that, that you're putting something out in the world in a way that you no longer control it. And I remember I had some big feelings about like certain things of like my high school experience that were kind of going to be like, not that they were going to be done forever, but I was going to sort of release them into this book. And so I think there's things that when we, you know, I think for Austin, when he writes about his story with his dad, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think he's also kind of releasing some of the story and releasing, you know, some of it into the work, right? Um, so I think that that's true for for other um, other stories. And there's one story that's, uh, I think, that's coming up in the second half of the season that I don't want to spoil, but uh, it has to do with mental health stuff that is in, important to me. And I think that there were uh, a couple writers in particular who had experienced certain things in their life that were able to, to be taken um, and used as part of this story. So, you know, that's another example. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific, but I think you'll know it when you see it. How long have you been with your partner, your running partner? We've been writing together since the early 90s. Oh, that's wow. awesome. How'd you guys, can you tell us about him? Like, what's his name? How'd you guys meet? His name is Sievert Clarem. He's an extremely, extremely talented writer. We were both teamed up. Um, we, were, we were both signed individually by uh, an agent, talent agent. And then she teamed up. We were interested in writing with a partner. She teamed us up. Nice. Are you both on Tacoma FT right now? Yeah, we do. Every, we do everything together except for this, uh, a book that I'm writing on the side. But everything else we do together. Nice. What makes a successful partnership, writing partnership? It's, I mean, it's, it is literally like a, magic, uh, like a marriage. I mean, we've been together for longer than many people have been married. Uh, at this point, it's, it's, there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of, um, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think either one of us cares if it's our idea. I don't care if it's mine, if it's his. If it's his, he's got a better idea, let's do it. But whatever gets me home earlier, is that's the one we want to do. Uh, so there's a lot of trust and a lot of, you know, we don't really fight over. If, if, once, once you've done it for long enough, your ego goes out the window. It's no longer about the excitement of seeing your words on the screen. It's really more about, okay, this is the job. And how do we serve the story? Because the story is the ult- ultimately is the boss. What's the best path to, to, to serve the story? And then we get to go home. What books would you well, suggest? I would suggest if you're interested in books about writing, the, the three that I've enjoyed far and away the most are, and I'm not the first one to say this, On Writing by Stephen King. Uh, and two books by, and I apologize, I've never heard his name spoken aloud, so I'm going to mispronounce it terribly, uh, the brilliant Javier Griot, Griot Marchot. Um, he wrote two books that are amazing. I, he, I hope that he forgives me for that pronunciation. And for, I, uh, assuming his pronouns are he and him, and I've probably offended him now twice, but um, he is just, he wrote two amazing books about writing that just really inspired me. You mentioned like regular working hours, even after Dr. New Blood, uh, like what are those hours? Is it like specific times every day? Are you better in the morning or at night or mid afternoon? I think we were writing, uh, well, Dexter, New Blood, post pandemic, the hours became 10 to four, mm-hmm. um, not post pandemic, when the pandemic yeah. started, that's what our Zoom hours became. And then we were pretty good about keeping those mm-hmm. throughout until we got our next job. Yeah. Um, which our next job became nine to three. Um, but if we, if we, <laughs> if uh, next time, you know, we find ourselves without employment, I hope we go back to 10 to four because I, to answer your other part of the question, am not a morning person. I'm terrible. <laughs> Despite having a dog named coffee, that's not enough to wake you up. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, I, I conversely am a morning person. I wasn't originally like when I was doing comedy so much of that's at night and I love being out and about and like seeing human beings. So the past couple of years have been tough, but like in the process of trying to find time to write, I realized that if I just got up and did it, then no one can take that away from me later in the day. Um, And I also find that my brain in the morning, very tangible problems, uh, have a way of like occupying my thoughts that make it hard to like push them aside and write. 
And I feel like, and I shouldn't say problems, but just like things to do, you know, it's like, oh, and it's sometimes it's work related, like emails you have to respond to, you know, people who you, you want to like read and, and give feedback. Sometimes it's just life stuff like, hey, we need to send out an invitation for the Renaissance Fair weekend we're trying to plan with friends or whatever. <laughs> Dork, um, dork. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alex is not on that list, so <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> but like all of those things sort of cascade throughout the day and it makes it, makes it much, much harder for me to focus at night. I, you know, you can if you have to, but um, I find it is easier to write in the morning and then I can feel good. Like I did, I did the main thing today and everything else I'll figure out as I go. You can find these podcast episodes in full on my website at www.jordanimiola.com. Subscribe, rate, and review for more episodes. Thanks for watching the Deadline Junkie Screenwriting Podcast.